Tonight is all about the fuel lines. Um, one thing that I kind of skipped over is that last night I was underneath the car taking out all the old fuel lines and I didn't really film any of it for a couple of reasons. One, I was really tired and lazy, but also it's really hard to film under there because I'm very cramped, it's very uncomfortable, and I just kind of wanted to get it done. And a lot of the bolts that were holding in the, um, the, the plastic liner were kind of um, rusted and hard to get out. So it's kind of a pain in the ass, but I got it out. And so what I'm going to show you is the old lines, and um, I'm going to use those as sort of a template to bend the new lines and uh, it's going to kind of simplify the setup because um, there's actually three fuel lines that come from the tank. Uh, there's the feed line, the return line, and then the evaporation line, which is part of the emission system. I'm not going to be running that line or a new line, so um, I'm really just going to be sticking to the feed line and the return line both of which have been upgraded to half inch line for the feed, which will use uh, dash eight AN connectors. And then also the return line will be a three eighths inch line, which is slightly bigger than stock. Um, but the important one is the feed line. Um, I'm gonna be running E85, which requires a lot more fuel. So that's why we're beefing up the fuel lines. Um, so. Hopefully I can get that done tonight. If I have extra time, I will work on the new um, rear brake line, which kind of runs right along with the fuel lines. And um, we'll see how far we get. As you can see, there are the three fuel lines and then the brake line. These are all kind of attached together with these clips. I'm not going to be using any of these, but I am going to use this as a rough guide. I'm going to do the feed line, which is going to be the difficult one. And then the return line will be a lot easier to bend. What I need to decide is how much of the ends here I actually want on each side. I'm most likely going to just keep it pretty straight and then run a hose on the end as opposed to bending this whole line. That way it gives me a little bit more flexibility on this side that enters the engine bay and on the other side that enters the where the differential is. I didn't film the return line, but basically I did the same exact thing. I just um, 
put the tubing next to the one I had already bent, marked it, and then just uh, try to bend it at the same angles, and it turned out pretty good. The return line, that uh, 3 8 inch line, is a lot more pliable than the half inch, so it's easier to bend, and also it'll be a little bit more forgiving underneath the car when I actually get it mounted up. It'll have a little bit more wiggle room than the feed line. Alright, I'm making really good progress. I've got both lines cut to length. So I'm going to deburr both ends and then install the compression fittings. And um, these are vibrant uh, fittings. The way that they work is there's three pieces. Um, these two screw, <coughs> these, these two unscrew. There's a little brass olive on the inside and the bottom section goes over the tube first, then the brass olive, and then this piece, when it's tightened together, will crush the olive, and then you've got something to connect up your hose to. So, I'm gonna go ahead and do that on both sides of this one, and then these are dash eight. These are dash eight a n, and then the smaller ones are dash six. So I'm gonna to get to those next. So here are the new lines. It'd be a little bit hard to see under here, but got the feed and the return line. So <clears throat> the compression fittings are on, and I'll just make make some short little sections of hose to uh, go the last bit into the gas tank and then up to the engine and the fuel filter. <laughs> 